Good morning class and welcome to our lectures on sustainable energy technology. We have been discussing solar photovoltaic systems and we began our discussion in the last session. Today we will continue our discussion on the technology behind solar PV cells. In the last class we discussed the difference between metal conductors, non-metallic insulators and semiconductors. And we saw that the difference boils down to the band gap that exists between the valence band which is filled with electrons at 0 kelvins and the conduction band which is the allowed energy band which is just above the valence band. For conductors, the conduction band and the valence band overlap. For insulators, the energy gap between the conduction and the valence band is greater than 4 electron volts whereas for semiconductors it is less than 4 electron volts. The upshot is that that when the temperature rises for semiconductors there is enough thermal energy available for some of the electrons to be promoted to the conduction band so that they can carry part of the electricity. Hence semiconductors are partially conduct conductive to electrical current. For insulators, the band gap is too high and hence very few electrons can actually get promoted through thermal energy alone to the conduction band and hence the ability of insulators to conduct electricity is extremely low. For conduction band, for the conductors, because the conduction band and the valence band are overlapping even at 0 kelvins, there is always a lot of electrons that are available in the conduction band to transport electricity. Hence, conductors can easily transport electrical current when an external voltage field is applied to it. We can see this difference quantitatively as well from the concept of field fraction and Fermi level and we will discuss this briefly today. So our discussion continues. So, solar photovoltaic systems. We will continue this discussion. So, filling fraction F E T is the function that gives the probability that an allowed energy level E is filled with electrons in a solid at a temperature T. So the filling fraction FET is a function that gives a probability that an allowed energy level E is filled with electrons in a solid at a temperature T. Okay. So, this field fraction is almost close to 1 in the valence band and it will be 0 in the conduction band for insulators and semiconductors at least at 0 kelvins. So, we can say that at 0 kelvins, The fill fraction, the filling fraction, sorry, fraction is a step function and we have F 
P at 0, 0 because it is 0 Kelvin, equal to 1 for all energies below EF, which is called the Fermi level energy, and F E0 equal to 0 for E greater than EF. Okay. Let us understand this idea using the examples of semiconductors and uh, conductors, semiconductors and insulators. First, we will look at the case of a 0 Kelvin case for conductors. Okay. So, here we have our conduction band and this is our valence band. This is E, this is the energy level, okay. Now at 0 Kelvins, the entire valence band is completely filled with electrons up to the top of this valence band, okay. Beyond this, because there is no thermal energy, no electrons can move to this point. So the top, uh, the electrons are completely filled to the topmost section of your valence band whereas the conduction band is only partially filled up to the level to which they overlap. Okay. So, this level is called the Fermi level EF for the conductors. Okay. The top of the valence band is the Fermi level EF for conductors. So, here the filling fraction, if we put the filling fraction F E0, this can start from 0 and go up to 1. It is a probability, right? So, we can write this as a step function like this. Up to the Fermi level EF, which is the top of the valence band for conductors, the probability of finding an electron at a given energy level is always 1 because the, uh, the energy levels are fully filled. Beyond this Fermi level, all the energy levels are vacant, so the probability goes to 0. So, this is our step function. Okay. So, now let us look at the case for insulators or semiconductors. semiconductors and insulators. Okay. So, here this is our conduction band and this is our valence band. There is a band gap between these two. Okay. At 0 Kelvins, the valence band is again completely full. Then there is a forbidden zone and beyond the forbidden zone, again, the uh, is the conduction band, correct. So, here we put the Fermi level at the center of your forbidden zone, okay. So, your fill fraction this is your EF, this goes to 0 to 1. Okay. And your Fermi level goes like this. Okay. Now, here for all allowed energy levels below the Fermi level, the field fraction is 1 and for all allowed energy levels above the Fermi level, the field fraction is 0. Okay. Now, here the field fraction goes to 0 before you reach EF because this is the forbidden zone. So, 
energy level allowed energy levels are only we are looking at okay uh, this for band gap is where energy levels are forbidden you cannot have actual energy levels present in uh, in in the band gap area okay so for all allowed energy levels below the fermi level you are still getting a field fraction of 1 and for all allowed energy levels above the fermi level which is your valence band conduction band you are getting a field fraction of 0 okay so that's the idea so in semiconductor insulators the fermi level is half of the is in the in between the two band gaps so this is e gap by 2 this is also eg by 2 okay so this is the situation at zero kelvins now what happens when you look at a temperature above zero kelvins okay so at temperatures higher than zero kelvin the filling fraction becomes a continuous function such that the filling fraction at the fermi level energy value at a given temperature t is given by 0.5 okay so what this means is the probability of finding an electron at an allowed energy level equal to fermi energy level ef is 50% okay so that if the fermi level energy is an allowed energy level then the probability that you will find an electron in that energy level is 50% half so let's explain this idea again using first a conductor case so for conductors as we increase the temperature you have more and more thermal energy available for electrons to be promoted to your to the upper levels of your conduction band okay so let's again see the two bands together this is your conduction band this is your valence band okay so now what happens is that the the electrons are getting promoted from the top of the valence band to your upper levels of your conduction band okay so then what happens is you will find a fermi distribution like this if this is your new fermi level value then this is your f e t and the fermi level value at which this probability is 0.5 so this is 1 this is 0 is your fermi level okay so here what we are seeing is that because electrons are being promoted from the uh, valence band to the conduction band there are now less than one, uh, not all the uh, energy levels in your valence band is filled because some of the electrons have moved up so the probability in the valence band also slowly decreases as it reaches the top levels of your valence band 
whereas the upper levels of the conduction band are getting filled with electrons as well. So you get this kind of a function, a continuously decreasing function of FET with E. And the point where this uh, probability value goes to 0 0.5, that energy is the Fermi level energy. Okay. Now, how does this change for insulators and semiconductors? So, first let us look at insulators. So, for an insulator, the conduction band and valence band are very far apart. Okay. So, you can look at your Fermi level value like this. So, this is 1, this is 0 0.5, this is 0. So again, you have a very similar kind of a Fermi level function where from near the top of your uh, valence band, the Fermi level values begin to decrease and goes to near zero as you increase in energy. However, since the band gap between the valence band and the conduction band is so large, the probability of finding the electron up, uh, at the lowest allowed energy level in the conduction band is very close to zero for an insulator because this distance is very large okay you will get within it the Fermi level value which is 0 0.5 but it will be in one of the forbidden zones so there will not be an actual energy level associated with the actual electron position associated with the Fermi level energy but it's the hypothetical energy level which if it was allowed would have a probability of 0 0.5 of finding an electron there 